Hi, in this video I have prepared two multiply choice questions for you and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose your correct answer and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is the first question. A gene on the X chromosome is said to be and here is the five answers to choose from and I would start with um, uh, answer E, a mutation and uh, on the X chromosome there are about 2000 genes and uh, of course we cannot say that all those 2000 genes are mutated so this is total nonsense so we can cross out this answer answer D bipolar and this um, doesn't have any reference to the uh, chromosomes so we can cross out this answer and now we left with three answers that uh, seems like make sense and now it's more difficult to choose the correct answer and um, answer A heterozygous can we say that all the genes on the X chromosomes are heterozygous and let's take example imagine this is going to be female with two X chromosomes and here on one of the chromosomes she may have um, dominant allele A and on the other chromosome she may have recessive allele A but uh, there is other possibility that she may have here dominant allele A and here she may also have dominant allele A Yet another example, once again female, that can have recessive allele here and recessive allele here. So as you see, females can be uh, heterozygous, homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. So we cannot say that uh, uh, alleles or genes on the uh, X chromosome would be heterozygous these genes can be um, homozygous dominant and also can be homozygous recessive and we can cross out this answer and now we left with two answers sex limited and X linked and what is the sex limited traits or genes and this is when uh, for example both um, genes are present in males and females but uh, would be expressed differently for example uh, imagine that males uh, may have uh, hairs on the legs and uh, facial hairs but females usually have on the legs uh, hairs to the much small extent and almost no facial hairs at all so uh, this would be example of the sex limited uh, traits and of course such genes can be on any of the chromosomes not necessary that it should be on the X chromosome so we can cross this answer and the only correct answer would be X linked so the genes that can be found on the X chromosome we call X linked and Yet another example uh, would be males that has uh, one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And of course this is not what you can find in the um, nucleus. Uh, X chromosome would look like uh, just such structure with centromere and um, Y chromosome would look like also small chromosome much smaller about uh, 10 times smaller and um, X uh, chromosome would have about 2000 genes and Y chromosome would have about 200 genes so as you see uh, we call uh, males hemizygous for the X chromosome because uh, 
males would have only one X chromosome and this X chromosome wouldn't be balanced with another chromosome as we have uh, for the other 22 pairs of chromosomes but this 23rd pair in males uh, wouldn't be balanced and we call this hemizygous and all the uh, genetic disorders that can be present on the X chromosome in recessive form, for example, a small A allele, like in um, hemophilia, uh, wouldn't be uh, phenotypically expressed in females, but would be uh, uh, phenotypically expressed in males. And here is an example. Uh, imagine that we have one phenotypically normal male whose genotype going to be X and Y. So this is male. And we would have also a female who is going to be uh, heterozygous for this genetic disorder, but would be phenotypically normal because this genetic disorder is recessive. And when a uh, female has one dominant allele and one recessive allele, uh, such female wouldn't express this uh, genetic disorder. And male also would be phenotypically normal, so would have also dominant allele on the X chromosome. But when we cross, or if this couple would have children, of course, as you see, 50% of them would be females, XX, and 50% of them would be males. So males and females would be uh, one to one ratio, as you see. But in females here, we would have, um, here we would have capital A and capital A. Here we would have small a and capital A alleles. So this female here would be phenotypically and genotypically normal. Female here would be phenotypically normal, but genotypically would be a carrier, just like her mother. And with males, here we would have one normal allele from mother side. But here, on the, with the second example, this male would have one recessive allele and this recessive allele wouldn't be balanced with another allele on the X chromosome as uh, in the case with um, females here because uh, Y chromosome doesn't have this allele and that's why we call males hemizygous. So 50% of the males would be phenotypically normal and 50% of the males uh, would be affected with this uh, recessive genetic disorder that we call X-linked. And now we can move to the second question or statement the physical characteristics of an organism resulting from its genes are known as the organisms and here once again five answers to choose from and answer A alleles and what is the alleles? Alleles is just different uh, versions of the same gene so even one small mutation in the gene means that this is new uh, variant and we call such variant allele. So we can cross out this answer and uh, answer B, hybrids. And what is a hybrids? Uh, imagine that we have a field with uh, plants and uh, some plants would be resistant for uh, some uh, disease and some would be susceptible and imagine that we just uh, take those uh, plants that would be uh, resistant to this 
um, disease, for example, disease A, and we use these uh, plants in order to uh, produce the next generation. So this would be parental generation. Now we produce the next generation, that is F1 generation. Uh, and of course in the next generation, so we self-pollinate these uh, plants. And in the next generation, of course, we expect that there are going to be more um, plants that is going to be resistant to this uh, disease. But of course, some of the plants also would be present that would be susceptible to this uh, disease. Why? Because these plants in the parental generation would be uh, genetically uh, diverse and uh, of course uh, in the next generation would produce not only plants that would be uh, resistant but also susceptible plants uh, would be present also. But if we would produce the same trick generation after generation at the generation F10 we would have uh, almost uniform, genetically uniform plants that would produce um, plants that would be 100% uh, resistant to this disease. And imagine that uh, we also would have uh, another uh, disease, disease B, and we would have another field of the plants. Once again, we would have uh, some plants that is going to be resistant to this disease B, some would be susceptible, and we are doing the same selection as uh, in our first example, and generation after generation of self-pollination uh, in F10 generation, once again we have uh, plants uh, that is going to be uh, genetically uniform and 100% would be uh, homozygous at the all loci. So we call such, um, as you see, we can call this line, we, ca we call such uh, lines pure lines or pure breeds. And when we, for example, want to produce um, another uh, breed that we call hybrids, we just can um, cross these two uh, genotypes that is going to be pure breeds and we are going to produce another um, line that we call hybrids and we expect uh, the other line to be both uh, resistant to disease A and disease B. That uh, explains why hybrids are so um, desirable on the market because usually hybrids uh, just have a desirable characteristic of the different um, kind. As in our example, it can be just resistant to, to disease or it may have resistance to one disease and uh, at the same time may have uh, another desirable characteristic as fruit shape, uh, fruit um, uh, color for example or taste. So uh, we just combine with two pure lines some desirable characteristic in hybrids. So it doesn't answer our statement and uh, we can cross out this answer answer C, recessive characteristics and uh, physical characteristics of the organism uh, resulting from its genes can be recessive uh, as you see in this example here it can be dominant, homozygous dominant, it can be heterozygous and uh, sometimes heterozygous condition and homozygous dominant as in this example doesn't affect how um, this trait appear. 
So uh, recessive characteristics also doesn't answer this uh, question or statement. So we can cross out it. And genotype and genotype is basically just a genetic sequence. So we have four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uh, thymine that can make a different sequence. And uh, different sequence means uh, that uh, we also um, looks differently. And exactly how we looks we call phenotype. So this is going to be our answer. Answer E, the physical characteristics of an organism resulting from its genes are known as the organism phenotype. So phenotype is just visual characteristics that are due to different genotype. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.